Caution. All garages are different. Watch this video all the way through and carefully read written instructions before installing. If you are unsure or uncomfortable with installing this product, contact a structural professional. Always test this mechanism using a live load. Never stand, allow children or pets to be under lifted object. Misuse or improper installation of this product can result in serious injury or death. Follow all safety rules and regulations of tools and ladders while installing this product. Wear safety glasses and protective gloves when installing this product. Hi, Carter from Lang Originals. Today we're going to be doing the assembly instructions for the hoist a cart Gen 2. So if you're watching this video, uh, you've already purchased the hoist a cart Gen 2 or you're considering buying the hoist a cart Gen 2. Either way, we'd like to thank you very much for your purchase or your consideration. And I'm, my goal today is to be able to help you assemble this very quickly and efficiently. Uh, so let's get this thing broken open and lay out the parts and, and go about this the best way. All right, so I successfully got both of the hoist a cart Gen 2 boxes open, was able to lay everything out. Um, and then I got my paper instructions out and went through a parts list to make sure everything was here, made sure the UPS didn't uh, lose anything or that we didn't lose anything on the way. So everything checked out, it was good. Um, and then I also went over to the toolbox and somehow was able to find all the right wrenches that I need. I only need a couple of tools, so that's, that's one of the nice things about putting everything together. What I'll need for this installation I'll need two 9 16th wrenches. I have the little ratcheting one, but a box end or even a, even a crescent wrench will work just fine. Um, an Allen wrench in the size of 3 16 that one we'll need. An Allen wrench in the size of 1 8 I don't think we'll need this, but we'll, we'll have it just in case we do. And then a 7 16 uh, uh, box end or wrench uh, for assembling the winch. Okay, so one of the things I hate is opening up a great big huge parts bag and having all these bolts and nuts laying there and not knowing what they're for and putting them in the wrong holes and then having to take it apart again. So what I've done is I've laid all this out so that hopefully that won't happen and it'll be really easy to install. So as you can see, we basically have uh, several different sizes of bolts here. Um, the longest ones are three and a half, going down from th to three to two and a half to one and three quarters. And then I put all of these over here. These are the smaller, the smaller bolts, and those we'll use for the casters. And then there's three in here that are little tiny stubby ones. You can see they're just a little bit smaller than the caster bolts, but those will be used to attach the, um, the winch to the uh, hoist a cart Gen 2. We've got our roller bushings here. And then I have another parts bag in here, and then there's actually some other parts in the winch box, but we won't worry about those, and we'll, we'll approach those a little later. So with all this laid out and with everything to go, um, we'll, let's, let's start assembling this. Okay, so we're just going to be doing step one in the paper instructions, and I've pulled out five parts to start with. HAC 550, 058, 057, 059 and uh, two 059s and I'm going to grab four the four three and a half long uh, bolts and four of the nylock washers so that's what we're going to need for our first step and basically I'm going to make a like a little tic-tac-toe thing here one's going to be in our back here and then these two are going to run and I've got the the two holes right here I'm just going to put this down like I said just make a little tic-tac-toe here one two there all right I'm going to put this one on here and I'll see if I can you know, line those holes up the best that I can as I see it. Doesn't have to be perfect. 
And then I've got the second bar right here. Okay, and then I'm gonna put this guy on top. And my four long bolts and my nylac, my light nylac nuts. And I'm gonna put all four of these together. Okay, we're done. We're already moved on to the second uh, part of the paper instructions. And of course the sticker disappeared on me on here on this. So I just wrote it on here with a Sharpie. HAC067 is the next part. Here's our longest bolt. So we're gonna move down to the next size. We're gonna use two of the three inch and two of our nylock nuts. We're gonna put this, and I should mention that I am not tightening anything down at this point. I'm just putting it on hand tight up until it hits the, the nylock portion. And that's all we need to do it for right now. So I'm gonna put this next one on here. And then we'll move on to the next step. All right, we're already on to step three in the instructions. Now, uh, this one can be a little tricky. It's not tricky, but you need to make sure that you get the side correct. So I have HAC061 and HAC060. And so these are gonna line up in a specific, in a specific order. So you can see that there's a welded uh, piece on the very end here and that's gonna go farthest away from this large uh, mounting unit right here. So I'm just gonna slide this right into here. And you can see that this tab is back here towards the back. And I'm gonna do exactly the same thing with the other one here, with the uh, 060. So I'm just gonna make sure this goes right into here and right into here. Okay, and now we're, for these four, we're gonna use the one and three quarter inch bolts and four of our nylock nuts. We'll get those fastened down. It's already time to put on the casters. Okay, so the only difference in the casters, you'll notice is that there's casters that don't have brakes and there's casters that have some nice brakes on here. We just wanna make sure that we get the brakes right here in the back. And the hardware that we're gonna use is these bolts right here that we have for that are left over for the casters. So I'm gonna put these, line these up right here. And we rec I recommend just because I think it looks a lot nicer and how we recommend in the instructions is that you put the nut on the bottom. So I'll grab a nylon nut. All right, we're already ready for the casters. So the casters are very straightforward. There are casters with brakes and without brakes. There's two of each. So the ca two casters without brakes are gonna go up here on the front and the two casters with brakes are gonna go back here in the back. And we're gonna use our three quarter inch bolts. Grab four of those and four of our nylock nuts. And I like to put the bolt so that it faces down and then put the nut on the bottom. I'm gonna get all four corners done. So I'm actually gonna tighten on, uh, tighten down all the hardware on my casters here. And as I was doing that, I noticed like one little, one little tidbit here that as I was tightening this down, um, if you use the loop end of your box end wrench, uh, it actually can get pinched inside of here and be hard to release when you get it tightened down. So in order to resolve that, I just use the open end of my wrench here. And as I tighten down my bolt, I don't have any problems. There we go. And I don't have any problems with that sticking in there and creating a frustrating situation. Time for step five in the written instructions. I finished tightening down my casters. So they're nice and tight. Uh, I do still have my hardware on the frame itself is still loose. So uh, this is tight, but these are still loose. The next part I'm gonna install is the HAC053. This is kind of the, probably one of the heaviest parts of the kit. It has several of the accessories on here. Wow. 
plastic off. Okay, so you can see it has the mount here for the winch, has a mount here for the handle, and it has the tabs for the door hanger. And that is all gonna be pointed towards me. I'm gonna slide it down into here. So again, those things are pointed towards me. And then I'm going to get two of my three inch bolts. Feed those through the holes there. Put on two of the nylock nuts. And again, I'm just gonna do this finger tight. I don't know where that one went, but okay, there we go. Finger tight. And then I'm gonna do one of the two and a half inch bolts and nuts, and I'm gonna put it right here. This, this is just a, this is just a safety uh, bolt. Um, when we have the part up here, it won't go, it won't go down any farther than this, and uh, it, it, it's a stopping point. So this one I can tighten if I want to, or I can tighten it later when I tighten everything. All right. We're on to step six in the paper instructions. Um, we're going to need, for this section, we're going to need the HAC052, HAC050, and the HAC051. Both of these are exactly the same. And I'm going to move around a little bit so it's a little more camera friendly. And lay those out. And the pieces of hardware we're going to need, we're going to need three of the two and a half inch bolts and three of our nylock nuts. So the HAC050 is what's going to go on this top portion of this bar right here. Just like that. And then the 052, and you'll notice that the, the roller bushing is out there on the end. And then I've got this portion right here that has two holes here at the top and a single hole down here at the bottom. And this is going to go on this portion right here. And I'm going to put my hardware in, not in this hole but this one, this one, and this one. So we'll put that in. And I'm gonna go down into the hole. This is like a big sloppy mess, so don't feel bad about it. It just moves around a little on you. Just, just get one in at a time and probably fast forward this part so you don't have to suffer along with me. This one here. There we go. All right, so now this last one, and remember again, this is the, I'm gonna do this in the top hole and not down here. Uh, one of our quick release pins will go in this hole right here. And I'm just gonna do this hand tight again. All right. All right, we're off, we're on to step seven. Finally, we have to use these, these roller bushings. And one thing I didn't mention before is that there's a, there's a smaller insert in the roller bushing and then and then the larger one so I have those kind of put together right now so I'm going to grab I'm going to grab my roller bushings my three roller bushings and I'm going to grab, grab the uh, three of the last two and a half inch bolts and three of the nylock nuts and uh, if you want to come in here and check this out I want to show uh, which holes so I'm going to I'm going to be putting the roller bearings in this hole this hole and this hole right here. Again, this one's gonna stay empty because I'm gonna put one of the quick release pins. Now there's three, there's three quick release pins and there's two different kinds. So there's, uh, there's a smaller one here 
that's not the one we're going to use. We're going to use one of the one of the with the bent with the square bend on the wire. So I'm going to just go ahead and put that in first here. And then I'm going to put so everything looks the same. I'm going to put the bolt in going this way and the nut on the other side. So I'm going to do one two here. All right, and I'll put my nylon nuts on the back of those. And at that point, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten everything on the hoist a cart at this point. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tighten these down and I'm gonna tighten everything on the frame. So one of the things that I failed to mention in the last segment was that when you're tightening down your roller bearings, you wanna make sure that you tighten them down uh, not too snug. I leave a little bit here, so really actually all you have to do is get into the nylock and just tighten them down a little bit because we want to make sure that these roller bearings roll nice and freely without any resistance. One of the things I failed to mention when I'm tightening up all of my hardware here, it's really nice to be able to tighten in an order that makes sure that the base is nice and square. So what I like to do is I like to tighten these, these bolts first and then following with these and then with these and then at last I do the outside edge and that seems to make everything nice and square so just a little tip and trick there all right we're on to step eight step eight's an easy one i'm going to put this portion in here i'm going to slide it down i kind of make sure i keep my hands out of here so i don't want to get pinched just slide this down nicely and that was the reason we installed our safety bolt right here so that it won't go down any farther than that and if your top is ever on this, it won't ever come any farther than, than that point and it won't damage your top or come in contact with your top in any way. Let's install the handle now, the HAC0065. And for this one, we're going to need our quick release pin that has the rounded bottom or the smaller quick release pin. Let me turn this around so camera can see it. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I, we're just going to put it down there so the holes line up. Drop the pin in, and then we're ready to push it around. All right, we're on to step nine. Now this step takes up a whole page in, in the instructions, but it's not that bad. So for this step, you're going to need HAC063. HAC064, the bar in the middle, HAC062, and two of our black foam pieces. So the first thing to remember when starting this step is you need to get the foam pieces onto, onto your bar. This is pretty easy to do. All you do is just slide them on. And I just slide them on, I don't know, about a foot or so, and that gets them out of the way for a bit. guys on. All right. So next, uh, these are directional. So as you pull them out, what you need to remember is that there's this, uh, basically there's this bent portion right here, and that's going to go towards the front of the apparatus here, the hoist of cart. So that it's going to sit just like this, and so both need to be both need to be oriented that same way. And I notice that with uh, one of these here, it looks like my uh, my rubber pad has like come on. The adhesive is just bubbled just a little bit here. No problem at all. Sometimes that happens in the shipping or in the settling. I'm just going to smooth that down and make sure that's nice and flat on there. No big deal. And then that's going to go the same direction over here. All right, so I'm gonna get my 3 16 Allen wrench and I'm gonna loosen this if it needs to be loosened. It should be in about the right position. I just wanna make sure there's no, there's no part of this uh, set screw that's poking through. And I'm gonna put this onto the bar here. Now I'm gonna go all the way to the end and then I'm gonna come back off about 
uh, about an inch or so. And this can all kind of change a little bit. I'm not going to tighten this down too hard either. I'm just going to tighten it up snug enough that I can that it won't slide off on me, but I'm not going to crank it right down. And I'm going to put this on here and then set up the other side in the same way. I'm just going to loosen this, make sure we're okay. I'm going to slide this on. You can see that slipped off. That's okay. What I'm going to do, what I'm what I'm going to try and focus on here is having the roller bearings, both roller bearings sitting on this platform in here. If you want to come in and zoom in on this so that you can see that the roller bearings are sitting nice and square right on there and then I'm going to tighten I'm going to tighten my set screw. Then I'm going to go check my other side. And I can see here that my roller bearings are off quite a bit, but I, ha I still have an inch of slack in here. So I can loosen this one a little bit and then move this in so that both roller bearings are sitting nice and flush on there. So I got my roller assembly all assembled here. And as you can see, it's rolling back and forth nice and free. And for a minute there I had it, I had these probably a little too tight. And so it was it was binding and it wasn't rolling nice and smoothly like this. And so at this point, if you do need some fine adjustment, you can take the eighth inch Allen wrench that we talked about at the beginning. And right here on the inside, you want to come in and check this out. Right here on the inside. I hope that focuses in. You can see that there are some tiny little set screws with a nylon tip on them. And if you need some fine adjustment, usually from the factory, it's, it's set up just right and you don't need any adjustment at all. But if you do need some fine tuning or you're not quite happy with the way it's sliding, first of all, check and make sure that your, your, uh, the, the base of the hoist cart is nice and square if you've tightened up everything so that it's nice and square. And then you can adjust these if you need to. More than likely, you shouldn't have to do it. All right, we're on to step 10. Uh, this will, we finally get to use these little tiny stubby ones that we've been waiting to use. So we're gonna mount our winch unit onto our, onto our hoist apparatus. And this might remind you a little bit of your days playing board games down in the basement. A little bit like operation, hopefully not that difficult, but it can be a little bit what I'm going to do, I need my wrench, but I'm going to put it down so I can use both hands. And you'll notice that I don't have my, I don't have my winch assembled at all. I don't have the handle on or anything like that, and that'll help me a little bit. I find it's easier to put, to put your bolt through here first, and then put it up here on the top one, and then just tighten that a little bit. And I'm not going to tighten it down too much. I'm just going to get three or four threads in there so I know that I'm there. I dropped one of my bolts, of course. I've got one here. Now I can move up and down to get that just right. And I still have enough room in here in my hand. I'm gonna let's see if I can turn this a little bit so that you can you can see that I've got that one in there, and then I've got one more right here. And Got it, I think. Well, no, too soon. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm using my left hand. I'm going to try and use my right. Let's see if I, I'm so right hand dominant that I can't. Okay, that helped. All right. Whew, we got that third one in. Okay, so now I'm going to take my 9 16 wrench, the, still the big one. I'm going to tighten each one of these down. All right, second part of step 10, the HAC 056, which is the brace that sits down here. And which, this is what your hardtop will lean on when it's on the cart, which is why we're going to put some nice soft foam pieces on here. I'm going to put those on first. You can put them on first or after, whatever you prefer. Put them on before. Make sure they're on there nicely. I leave, and I and I don't put the I don't have this so that it sticks out 
too far here. I have the foam, foam exposed. And then we're going to use our last two bolts, the three inch bolts. All right. And then I put the bolt through. It doesn't matter too much, but I think it looks nicer if you have the bolt going through and the nuts to tighten up here on the back side. You can tighten those down. Okay, let's assemble our crank unit. So in the crank unit box, it'll have some hardware pieces in there. Um, so let's focus on this bolt and this nut here first. So I'm gonna put this through. I'm gonna put this through here. Now, there's lots of holes around here, but you'll notice that there's really only two that line up nicely that, that fit this bolt and this nut assembly. And this is what's going to be holding our, our strap on. So I'm going to, and then I'm going to take our 7 16 our 7 16 wrenches here, and tighten this down. Now this doesn't need to be super tight. Just get it into the nylock just enough. All right, next let's assemble our handle. I'm going to put down my wrenches here so they have less to hold. Okay. I'm going to take the handle on. I'm just going to turn the handle clockwise on here to put it on. Okay, that's assembled. Now I'm going to take the remaining stuff here. So I've got a spring, I've got a spacer in here, and I've got my bolt and my washer. And this is going to go together like this. And then I'm going to put that the end here and tighten this down until I hit the end of the thread. There it is. And I'm just going to take my wrench and this, this isn't going to do much, but I'm just going to give it a quick, just a quick tighten. There we go. Okay. Let's assemble our, let's put our long strap, our lifting strap on to our winch and thread this through the roller bearings. And you'll notice on the end of this that we have two, we have two snap rings. Um, by the way, this is parts bag number HAC 066. And it was coiled up in here very nicely, but this is our second take on this. And so I, un I unrolled it. I'm not gonna roll it back up again. So I'm gonna take one of these snap rings off and that will make it much easier to thread through. Let's see, let's bring this around. This will make this much easier to thread through here. Okay, I'll just put that on the ground. Then I'm going to put my snap ring back on. That'll make it a whole lot easier, so I don't have to do that. Okay, so where this is going to go, I'm going to go up through here, and then I'm going to go through the bottom, the bottom roller bearing here. And then I'm going to go to the second roller bearing and I'm going to go straight down from there. So that's, that's our first one. The second one, the second one. So I'm not going to go through here again. I'm going to go over the, over the second roller bearing here, down through. I'm going to go over this same roller bearing here and then out out to the last one. There's about a one in a million chance that this won't have a wrap in it. If it does, we'll just have to... Oh my gosh. I might have to go play the lottery after this. There was no wrap in it. Okay. All right. So we have, we have this threaded through and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna coil this up for now to get it out of the way. In the second video, we're going to talk about how everything goes together and takes the top off. So the top removal is going to be part two of the video. But uh, to get everything up out of the way, I'm just going to crank this in. All right. We should feel pretty good about ourselves. We've got everything pretty much assembled. So we have to make a couple decisions now. One, the decision we have to make, what's your Jeep? This is for the JK. This one is for the JL. So we have a gel back here that we're going to be lifting the top off. So I'm going to choose to use this hook. 
So I'm going to take the JK hook and put it aside. And uh, if you don't have a JK, then you're not going to end up using this. You can discard it or use it for paperweight, whatever. So I'm going to take uh, our last piece of hardware, which is our quick link here. And I'm going to snap this onto the back. This is the, this is the back part where the hook will go. And I'm going to attach the hook. And I have a um, quick release pin here that's left over. That quick release pin goes for one of these four holes right here. And these depend on how high you need to lift your top. If you have a great big, huge, gigantic lifted Jeep, then you're probably gonna have to go up to one of the top rungs. Um, if your Jeep is a little more standard like this Jeep, then probably be in one of these two right here. So I'm gonna lift this up and there is a hole you can see a hole kind of peek through as you go by. And I'm just gonna put that in and have that ready to go. Um, so part two, we'll go over the assembly of the lifting strap and how to get that top off. Thank you very, very much for watching this video. And I hope that this made your installation a whole lot easier. Thank you very, very much.